Now let's look at the MyISIM check utility. This utility allows you to check the default storage engine used by MySQL, and that's MyISIM. So let's launch our notes and open a shell window while we're at it so we can begin exploration of this utility. Now you generally don't have to run the utility, but in the event that you realize corruption in any of your databases then or any of your tables, then this is a tool that you may consult to help get you out of trouble. So let's set up an area. We'll label it my isom check. And this utility checks as well as repairs if instructed to do so. It also optionally describes as well as optimizes my isom tables. And of course, my isom is the default storage engine. So default storage engine doesn't mean that it's the storage engine associated with a particular table, but it will be assigned automatically unless you specify otherwise. Another feature and perhaps a caveat which could cause interruption in service is the fact that this is an offline only utility. So let's just capitalize that it is offline usage only, which means you need to take your tables offline and ensure that there is no contention for accessing data from the tables. Now it's also run from the DB directory or with a path specified to the DB directory. So you do not supply credentials as you typically would do with other MySQL utilities. So it's run from DB directory or via path to the DB directory slash file. So you can supply one or more files using wildcards, one or more directories using wildcards if necessary. Now, one of the features provided is the ability to back up the original table before any operations are performed. So it optionally allows you to back up existing table prior to operations. In the event that some level of corruption is introduced, perhaps as you migrate from one version of MySQL to another. So that said, let's set up some tasks. And one is to examine the MySQL check utility and explore how we could possibly use it on our data directory. So examine slash explore my isom check. Note that its name does not contain EC in the full name. So my isom check utility. So let's open a shell. And as a non privileged user, if we tab out my, we see a bunch of utilities, including my isom check. Now, in order for you to make changes to a database, you need to have rights to that database. So it's suggested that you run this utility as root. Additionally, it suggested that you take the database server offline. So as part of our task, we'll take the MySQL instance offline. Again, this is a database administrative task that you'll perform offline when users are not using your system. Now that begs a question, what happens if we attempt to use MySQL check against a live file. Well, there could be locking issues. So let's S you in and show you how that would be impacted. Now, you normally reference the name of the table or all of the tables or all of the databases managed by the server on the command line or via a reference to the relative current directory. So either you change into the data directory or you reference the table or tables using the absolute path. So how do we know where MySQL for any given distribution of Linux stores its data? Well, we're using SUSE in this case, Enterprise 11, and other distros may use different directories. But if we PSEF grep MySQL, the running process should reveal a data directory variable. This is where MySQL searches for its databases. So let's just note that so that you are interacting with the right files. 
and we'll just note that we identified or identify data directory which is an internal MySQL variable using PSEF grep MySQL that pulls it out so it shows it for the running instance you may also consult the my.cnf global config file so if we grep data dir from etc my.cnf you'll see a number of references the default is for the default instance varlib mysql so there are a number of ways you can determine where mysql finds its database files so the idea is you'll want to navigate into that directory also notice that mysql is loaded with the skip external locking so because external programs are not able to lock the database files like mysm check it's advised that you take it offline before running it so we'll navigate into varlib and if you're using a different distro, just navigate into the data directory. And when you enumerate the contents of the top-level varlib MySQL container, you see a number of items including log files maintained by MySQL, as well as directories per database managed by the server, including the default MySQL test databases. So for example, we have a database LCBT prods demos. It contains a list of demo files as well as products. So there are a few tables in this particular container. So when you create a database in MySQL, what happens, as we've mentioned, is that a top-level container, a top-level directory is created beneath the data directory hierarchy root. So let's navigate into LCBT prods demos. And if we LSL, again, a number of files are returned. Usually from each MyISIM table, there are corresponding data files, data and form files, which contain the data as well as descriptors for the table, and the MYI file is the index file. So if we LSA, for example, let's go with products star, or even demos star, which lists the various demos that are on the website. These three files are married. They're related for the various functionality required by MySQL indexing, structural information pertaining to the table, and the table data itself. The file against demo star reveals various types for each file. Table def definition file is the form file or FRM file. The database file, which registers as DBase version 3, and also returns a number of records that it finds in the file, as well as the demos.myi, which is the index file for the associated table. So MySQL, as you know, ma manages tables using a series of three files, especially when using the MyISM form. So when you use MyISM check, you're performing your checks against either the index file or the data file directly. Normally, if you specify the index file, it'll automatically check the database file. So you can reference a wildcard such as demos star MYI or star MYI to have it check all of the tables as opposed to a particular table. So again, the server should be taken offline. A simple RC MySQL, this is within SUSE, or cross-platform etc init d, which works regardless of distribution, MySQL, stop, followed by an echo of the exit status, should stop the service, and then if we PSEF grep MySQL, we should see no instance of it. And of course, it comes back as exit status zero because the grep instance for that instance in time was reflected. So as a result, MySQL is no longer running. Of course, we can also net that NTLP grep 3306 to be sure that it's not running. And if there are any service monitoring packages in place in your environment, they should momentarily begin to throw errors regarding the inability to contact the service the unavailability of it. So now the server is offline and we want to use MySM check. In its default invocation, when you run it, it will check the table without making changes. So an example of invocation, and let's just list as task number two, use MySM check in a variety of ways. Again, this is a utility that you should not have to run often because MySQL does a fairly good job of managing 
the indexes, the tables, the descriptors, and so on. But every now and then, corruption occurs, whether because you're upgrading or some loose data have appeared in your tables because of indexing or key issues and so on. So sometimes garbage creeps in and MySM check will help you to identify and repair that garbage. And that garbage can cause your database to perform suboptimally. So a MySM check every blue moon, like an FSCK check of a file system, is advised. So a simple invocation, MySM check, we don't indicate, as we've mentioned, authentication credentials. Followed by the name of the table. Now you can specify the table name directly. So in the case of the demos table, we'd simply reference demos from this directory. So LSL, demos is the name of the table explicitly. Or we could reference the index file. So a demos.myi for my ISIM index will reference the demos.myi. Let's just include that it's uppercase because it is case sensitive. This will perform a basic check. So this is the default check. And the default check will not make changes. So does not make changes. It simply reports on the health of the database. Let's run my ISM check against it. And this is using the explicit index file. So this will run and it returns messages. There are some warnings concerning some variables that are important in particular when you do intend to make changes as per the suggestions of my ISM check. But these can be safely ignored. These are variables that become important when we instruct my ISM check to make changes or to repair or to optimize the database. Key buffer side, size, read buffer size, write buffer, sort buffer. These variables allow my ISM check to take advantage of the resources of your system to cache as much as possible in random access memory to make the operations that are performed, whether optimizing, repairing, etc., quicker than otherwise would be. So unsigned values are returned for 64-bit when it should be adjusted to 32-bit. These can be safely ignored. So here we see that MySim check checked demos.myi. It found 111 records, no deleted blocks. Again, sometimes when you delete items from a table, there's still some re residual information that's there that you don't see with a standard SQL query that's tracked by the index or discrepancies between the index and the data table that don't show up immediately but over time degrade the performance of the server. So checks the file size and these are the various checks that were run and it checks it checked the record references index indexes in, two, in these two cases and it didn't return any errors. Basic check, nothing was repaired. And also, the files have not changed. So demos.myi remains the same file with the same timestamp. With the timestamp differential simply being the last time the table was populated as opposed to the other tables. So notice these tables are older. So that's a simple check. Now, what if we were a bit suspicious and wanted to back up the table? prior to making any changes. So if we're suspicious about the behavior of the utility, then we'd introduce the backup option. So let's list that additional or alternate invocation. And that's my ISM check with the B option against the name of the index file. We usually reference the index file, but you could reference, as I've mentioned explicitly, the name of the table, in this case, simply just demos. So this is the default check however performs a backup it's always advised that you perform a backup whenever you're performing these operations just in case there are changes that are going to be applied unbeknownst to you and could result in interruption or a prolonged interruption in service so when we run this with the B option it backs up the file let's LSL notice that no backup appears, at least it isn't evident. When a backup is generated, a date suffix is tacked on to the database file.
So that begs the question, why doesn't the B option, when we run it in its default invocation, back up the file? And that's because we didn't make any changes. So performs a backup with one note, one caveat, if changes are to be made. And we'll also note that a simple check does not perform changes, which is what we noted initially. But the B option is safe to include, upper B that is, in all of your commands in the event that you tack on another option that causes changes or results in changes to your database file. So what could generate changes to the file? One option would be if you instructed MySMCheck to recover a particular table. So for example, MySMCheck back up the file, recover option R, in the event that you start MySQL and it throws an error, or you suspect that there may be problems with one or more tables because of inconsistencies with values returned or perhaps updating the table via update queries or inserts, etc. So recover, and we could either specify the name of the table or its index file directly, either or. So performs a recovery and provides a backup. Let's try the MySM check with the recover option and see how it performs. We'll just turn on recover. So simple checks won't generate a backup because simple checks don't change the source database file or the original file. So now, as we scroll through beyond the buffer sizes that are referencing 2 to the 64th versus 2 to the 32nd, we see that MySM check fixed the following index or indexes, index 1 and index 2. And now when we LSL, we'll see that the demos file has been backed up. And we know that it's a data file because we can compare the byte sizes or simply file demos star. And this returns the fact that the backup file is the same type as the new data file. So two indexes were repaired and that will optimize the table, the, the demos table in the event that there are issues. Also notice the number of records returned by the dbase file type query. This isn't definitive. Use MySM check for more definitive information. Now, speaking of more definitive table information, MySM check is a good offline way of checking certain statistics about tables. We've looked at MySQL show, but MySM My check is also pretty useful. For example, MySM check with the information option followed by the name of a table. So table name. This checks the table, of course, because that's the default. That's the default dash C option. But it also returns stats about the table. Let's try this option from the shell to see how useful it may be. So now that we've got our new demos table, we'll do a MySM check. And because it won't be making any changes, we don't have to worry about the B option, but we like to turn it on anyway. Return statistics about the demos table. Again, we could specify demos.myi, or we could simply specify the name of the table demos. Either or returns the same information. When you reference the index, it implicitly references the data table so we checked and we see the 64-bit errors then the number of data records this is definitive so this table contains 111 records not what the file program return the file program incorrectly labels the file as a dbase file here are the checks performed again by my ISM, the size record delete chain various delete chains for the key the index just making sure that the references check out and it goes even deeper, tells you how much it's compressed, the ratio of its compression, the record space used. This should be optimal. This should be as close to 100% as possible, which means there's very little wasted space in the table, barely enough to insert new records to keep it packed in optimally. The higher this value, record space use, usually the better. 99%, anything over 90%, or even higher is desirable. 
because it means less wasted space. Record blocks returns the same value returned by data records, 111. The record data, this is how much it's used, lost space, 80 bytes, no big deal. Empty space, linked data, various statistics returned as it applies to this particular table. So the key is that it isn't wasting much space. It returns a number of records, tells you how much it's packed in and other useful pieces of information. So you can return a synopsis about all of your tables by using my ISM check. Now again, we've mentioned wildcards are supported. So an alternate invocation to find out this sort of statistical data about your tables would be simply my ISM check with the I option followed by a star MYI. And we like to turn on the B option just because. Now in this case, nothing's gonna happen because checks don't make changes. You need to recover or perform a quick or fast recovery for that to occur. A quick or fast check, but that won't perform a recovery. It just returns the information quickly versus doing an extended check, for example. So this checks, and this will just note checks all tables. So let's try this out. And this will run against all the MYIs, star.myi. And it dumps the information you have to scroll through to see for each of the tables. There are only a handful of tables, but this is where we started. And it returned information for the demos table, followed by products, categories, and the products table. So these are the three tables that information was returned for and it checks through them and returns similar information. Number of records, record space used. This one's even more optimized, 100% versus 99%. Scroll up, this one's at 98%. Now, if we did a recover on each of these tables, my some check would squeeze the data in the tables even more so, making the usage more optimal. And this is standard when you use databases that things become, just like with hard drives, fragmented and suboptimal. So taking your database offline every now and then and running a utility like MySM Check will clean things up for you. Now there are a number of other options such as the ability to run in silent mode for example where nothing much is returned if you turn on the dash S option. But the dash S option or a couple S's only makes sense when you're performing checks against a particular table or more. So for example the info option returns statistics. The S option runs quietly, returning only errors that could potentially render your database suboptimal. So let's turn on this option, and that's my ISM check with the silent option, backup option if necessary, and all of the index files, and checks silently, returning errors to STDOUT, only when necessary, of course, instead of the additional information that's returned. So we run it, we see what it's checked, any errors, if anything, and it says that one client was using at the time and didn't properly close the products table, and it returns that it is usable, but it should be fixed. What this means is perhaps since the database is used, and that's this LCBT prods demos used by the staging site, perhaps when we shut the MySQL server, another user was connected to it, perhaps perusing it, whether using one of the MySQL front ends or perhaps via PHP or Perl or some other process. When you instruct the server to shut, it shuts. It closes out the connections or tries to and shuts pronto. However, it could cause some connections that were in some sort of transactional state to bomb. So that's something to be of, to be concerned about. Now, if we restart the service using our My, RC MySQL start or etc init d, it will start and we will be able to query the database. For example, that's MySQL, connect as root, prompt for password, and send a command of select star from the full path LCBT products or prods demos dot in this case the table is products 
And this will, if we authenticate successfully, execute the command for us against the database. And there you see the records are actually returned. Includes everything. However, my ISM check is still suggesting that we perform some sort of recovery against it. Now let's RC MySQL stop again and start, not start, but stop, and then rerun our query using MySM check. And it doesn't back up in this case. It's not necessary. In fact, we can, if it backs up the file, we can make the change. So let's remove the backup file that's there. Demos 104, clear screen, rerun our MySM check. And let's see what it tells us this time with the silent option. So again, it still believes products.myi should be addressed. But notice it was a check, so it didn't make the file. So if we tell it to recover just that file, let's go ahead and just include it as an option, since it actually found a problem, which is a good thing, because we could have recorded this segment with no problems whatsoever to report. So now we want to recover, backing up, of course, and the complaint is with the products table. So let's just reference products or products.myi. Either or will suffice. And this will back up or backs up. So let's just note backs up and recovers table. In this case, table products. And then the next time we perform the check, the error should be non-existent. Now, of course, you perform this check when the server is not running. Otherwise, you run the risk of corruption. If MySQL lets you have access via MySM check. So let's try to recover it. And it fixed the index for us. So in this case, we should be now in a good state. Now, let's check to see what backup file was created. And there we see with the Unix epic that the backup file was generated. And if we compare the product's backup file to the production file, notice that they're the same byte length, 9364. However, the index was fixed. Now, if we recheck, let's go ahead and perform our check, a silent check for any errors. Notice no errors were returned this time, which means things are clean for all intents and purposes, as far as MySQL is concerned. And if we use the system5 method, init d, MySQL start, followed by a rerun of our query. Let's get a history grep MySQL to run that query. 1030. And this will select star from it. The record should still show up, of course. That should not be an issue. So there are the records. But now, MySM check doesn't have a problem with the products table. Now, it still begs the question, what if we were to perform the check while the service is running? So let's go ahead and try to perform a check. Notice it appears to run, and it runs okay, but again, if you try to recover or make changes to the table while it's locked, then you'll encounter an error. So we'll again take our database offline using an RC MySQL stop and just check once more all the files in this directory just to be sure. Now again, the key buffer and the various buffer errors that are returned can be solved. If we check the global file, we should see where the directives come from. We also can check just by running MySM check with no options. This returns the default settings. And you'll see the settings that are applied for the various buffers that are used, like the key buffer. And these settings are derived in all likelihood from the global config file. As we can see above, MySM check reads first the global file, as most tools do, followed by one specified in the user's home directory and it checks the MySM check group. So if we were to make a change to that area using values like megabyte denoted, so let's go ahead and nano etc my.cnf, and we'll see if we search for MySM check, the area, and here we see the buffer descriptions set to sensible values, 20, 20, 2, and 2, but there's an 32-bit, 64-bit issue causing it to throw the error. It's a warning. It doesn't prevent it from operating. So it is operating optimally within the realm of 2 megabytes through 20 megabytes for the various buffer settings. So this is already set. It's deriving sensible values. And we see other settings for other, or other headers, other blocks for other tools. But MySIM check checks the MySIM check 
block in the global or the user's local configuration file. So the idea behind using this tool is to optimize your database to perform cleanup on items that sometimes become fragmented and as a result can cause your database to perform suboptimally. These are behind the scenes items. There are times, although rare, where you'll attempt to start MySQL and it'll fail to load a given table or perhaps a whole database as a consequence. And that's where MySM check if the storage engine is my ISM will come to help you. Now that brings us to one thing that we wanted to mention about the MySQL show command. Let's just note as a third task quickly to determine whether or not mysim check is applicable for all of the tables or any of the tables if we use mysql show which is what we worked on in the previous section and that requires authentication so we'll have it prompt us for example and we, if we have it check a specific database such as the one that we're using which is lcbt prods demos so we'll just take this block and paste it into our command then this will tell us about the storage engines within the database if we spe specify a specific table for example so lcbt prods demos and let's say we're interested in the products table since that's the one we just fixed now we want information about it of course so the mysql show command supports statistics about a given database let's go ahead and execute a mysql show with the help option as we scroll through the help option, we'll see that similar to the other utility, the I option shows statistics about the specified object. So let's turn on the I option, and we don't need to do any backups here. And the order with which we specify the options is unimportant, so long as we follow the format, which is the command followed by options followed by the database object hierarchy, separated by space as a delimiter. So let's control shift V, paste this to the shell, authenticate as root, and this will prompt us once we've authenticated. It doesn't connect because it's not running. And notice that MySQL show tried to connect through the Unix domain socket. So let's etc init D, MySQL start, and then rerun our MySQL show command, which connects to the socket, prompts us for authentication, and then shows us information about the various tables. Now notice for the products database or the products table in the LCBT prods demos database the engine is my ISAM. so that means we can use my ISM check against this particular table. Of course we've already done so but if you wanted to query the different tables in a given database then MySQL show can be a useful utility. For example let's query the MySQL database the users table and this will prompt us and it also returns the engine type so we can use this to return information out the, the engine type came back blank all of the information came back blank let's just try it again instead of users plural it's actually user singular and there it is as my SM so we can use this to return valuable information so we'll look into this utility to help you to better navigate table management. Let's just note enumerates engine type amongst other useful data. But in the case of MySM check, the engine type becomes important because a given database may have various engine types employed for various tables. So that's a little bit about MySM check.